Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mark Dirks, and on behalf of ACRL in Choice, I'd like to welcome you to today's program. Ebooks can do that. Customize your academic library with digital, which is sponsored by Overdrive. Today's discussion is one in a series of sponsored webinars from ACRL in Choice that addresses new ideas, developments, and products of interest to the academic library community. Free to users, these structured 60-minute live presentations provide the opportunity for interactive discussions of important new issues and developments in academic librarianship by librarians, vendors, authors, and other interested stakeholders. Before we get started, I'd like to point out a few features of the webinar software. In the main area of the screen, you should be able to follow along with the presentation materials. Along the right-hand side, you should see a Q&A panel and a chat panel. If you don't, you can click the buttons labeled Chat and Q&A in the upper right corner of the screen to activate the panel. Please use the Q&A panel to submit questions to our speakers. At the end of the presentation, they will take a few minutes to answer your questions, so please do send them in throughout. If you experience any technical issues, please use the chat panel to let me know, and I'll troubleshoot the issue with you privately. Today, we're using the hashtag ACRL Choice Webinars during the event, so if you have another screen handy, shout out to us. We're at choice underscore reviews on Twitter. Also note that we are recording today's program, and everyone who registered will receive a follow-up email with a link to the archived version. All right. Our speakers today are Paul Huffman and Rob Rando. Paul Huffman has been the University Archivist at Lindenwood since 2007. He has degrees from Lindenwood University and the University of Missouri-Columbia. Prior to working at Lindenwood, Paul interned at the Muse Missouri History Museum and the St. Louis branch of the Missouri State Archives. And Rob Rando joined Overdrive in 2017. He helps academic libraries provide specific and relevant ebook and audiobook content to their students. Rob joined the Overdrive team because of his passion for reading and desire to help libraries continue to offer the best products for their students and patrons. He is currently reading Grit by Angela Duckworth, which he recommends as a great book for business students. All right, so with that, we are ready to get started, and I will turn the floor over to you, Paul. Thanks, Mark. Uh, so I appreciate you inviting me uh, to participate in this webinar. Um, I've been with Lindenwood for about 10 years now, as you probably mentioned, and uh, my core responsibilities has been as the university archivist, but I also have uh, reference librarian responsibilities, which include uh, overseeing most of our digital book collections. and. In the 10 years that I've been here, um, the bulk of that time we have been uh, involved with Overdrive. We, I believe we were one of the first uh, early adopters for an academic library with Overdrive, and I'll, um, it's been a good experience during that time. Um, so just a little bit of background about Lindenwood. Uh, Lindenwood, uh, private uh, co-ed liberal arts university in St. Charles, Missouri. They have a broad range of programs from undergraduate to doctoral degrees. And um, approximately about 10,000 students between all of our different uh, programs that we have um, available through Lindenwood. So to, to give you a little bit of a background of my time here at Lindenwood, um, Lindenwood, went through some rapid growth during the 1990s and 2000s. And um, for instance, in 1990, uh, we were a very small liberal arts college. We had uh, about 2,700 students. And uh, during the 1990s and 2000s, uh, through a, um, rapid growth in our, in our county and the pro programs that we offered, uh, we grew to about 10,000 students in approximately a 20 year period. So um, let me, we, we saw that growing en enrollment as uh, an opportunity to grow our digital collections because in addition to our satellite sites um, that we had around the St. Louis metropolitan area, we also had a, a daughter campus about an hour away in Belleville. 
And um, so, so we need it uh, just, just because of the rapid growth in our constituents. We need to uh, rapidly grow uh, our library collections as well. And we found that uh, between our different satellite sites and the uh, Belleville campus, we needed something that would be easily accessible for those students that couldn't quite make it to uh, the main campus. Um, in addition to that, um, we noticed that, you know, just walking around campus when uh, we were watching our students, it, it's very easy to see on any kind of university campus that our students are just constantly connected to electronic devices. And we felt that, you know, in, 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 a, in order to stay relevant to those students, we needed to do something that was uh, digital so that uh, if the students didn't come to the library, we could come to them through their devices. Um, so in the immediate area around Lindenwood, we have three public, three really good public libraries uh, that have overdrive collections. But um, we noticed that with those public library collections, they cater more towards um, romance novels and kids' uh, literature and uh, just uh, things that wouldn't necessarily be um, uh, applicable to uh, an academic setting. So we thought we'd, uh, when we started our overdrive collection, we would do something that would um, would supplement what they could get through the, the public libraries. And so when we started off, we noticed that the, the public libraries didn't have much classic lit available. So we focused in on uh, classic literature titles. We, um, we surveyed the different uh, fields of study that Lindenwood had to offer and looked at the core titles that those uh, fields of study uh, recommended to their students. And we, we started reaching or started buying those titles uh, in those areas. And as we, we built that collection uh, and kind of filled that collection out, then we branched out into the, the popular titles uh, that uh, just, you know, New York Times bestseller list and uh, popular titles that uh, somebody could listen to when they're commuting to and from work. Um, I think I, I failed to mention too, one of the other reasons that we uh, were interested in doing overdrive was uh, when we started off uh, in the 1990s, Lindenwood was pretty much of a residential campus um, with very few commuters. And as we grew, uh, I believe our, our current uh, demographics for commuter students is around 55% of our students are, are commuters. And so we felt that another way to reach out to those students as they were commuting to and from work or to and from home would be those digital collections. Um, so academic libraries, we, we quickly realized, you know, were kind of uh, a different animal than the public libraries where you have this um, built-in constituency where, whereas academic libraries, uh, you have students that are graduate, graduating every four to six years. And we felt that, you know, in order to uh, keep the collection relevant to our students, to our professors, we had to uh, be proactive and uh, with our promotion to uh, our students. And um, initially what we started off doing, we took uh, bookmarks that Overdrive had provided us with our branded uh, logo and uh, had uh, student workers go out to high traffic areas of campus and hand those out. And it, that seemed to work initially. And uh, we, we also have digital billboards around campus where we would place ads for the overdrive collection, as well as uh, sandwich board signs in high traffic areas. And then um, our librarians, whenever they taught uh, classes on database and bibliographic instruction, we would uh, put a plug in for the overdrive collection as well. And so that, that seemed to uh, help keep the overdrive collection kind of in the forefront of our students' minds, uh, especially if they were new incoming students. Um, so initially when we started out, we were 
uh, a solo collection where we just had our own collection. Uh, but uh, as recently as December, we were in talks with um, several of the other academic libraries in the area about forming a, a combined collection. Uh, there was other two other academic libraries in the city of Missouri that had overdrive collections, but then there were other universities that were exploring the idea, and uh, we combined to form one uh, super collection between the three libraries that already had collections and those that were um, that were looking into it. And uh, the, the system, our our consortium that we uh, joined together and was. Mobius and Mobius uh, and Overdrive worked out a system where uh, the libraries could participate based on their full-time full enrollment, their, the fees that they had to pay uh, for joining the collection. And it, so far, uh, we've only been around for, uh, together as a, a combined collection for about two and a half months now, uh, but it, it seems to have worked out pretty good. We have a um, wide range of different college sizes, anywhere from a, a 300 student uh, college that's in our uh, consortium to um, 12,000 students um, public libraries. So, uh, so far it's, it's worked out really well. And um, I, I believe at this point I'm going to hand over the presentation to Rob from Overdrive. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate your, your background here. And thank you, for everyone, for coming on these uh, presentations today. What I want to do is, is take you through our product. And what I really want to do is show you the end result. Like if we were doing a cooking show, you'd see the, the final meal. And then we'll break down the specific ingredients that go into our platform. So the way we're going to do that is I'm going to share my screen. And hopefully everyone's going to be able to see this. We're going to go ahead and look at one of our, our partner websites. Um, and actually where I'm going to is our uh, local community college. This is Cuyahoga Community College, who has recently invested in a, a collection with Overdrive. So the first thing that you're seeing in front of you, you should be seeing their homepage. When a student goes onto the Overdrive powered website through uh, Cuyahoga Community College, or as we like to call them, Tri-C, this is what they see front and center. Now from a design standpoint, what you should notice is, is that it's pretty aesthetically pleasing. We have the covers nicely laid out, full cover, and we have these different bookshelves. And I just want to comment on that. The reason why we have this design to, to be engaging and everything's uh, easy to use, because it does promote uh, student engagement. It, it helps with the student experience. When they're on this type of uh, platform or library website, they're, they're encouraged to click around to find content and books that are going to be relevant to their classes, to their research papers, and then also uh, topics that they're interested in, depending on what you provide. So, a couple elements on the website are automated, and there's some that are, are customized. There's, there's different areas. There's some that you'll be able to be real specific with and um, build a library website that really represents your university and, and your programs. So let's go through those, and we'll kind of find out what fits where. Now, if I go to the subject area, I click this button. And this is one of those automated for formats. We can see that Tri-C or Cuyahoga Community College has invested about 2,000 titles. It's a good mix, about 50-50 of fiction and nonfiction titles. So when they purchase those books with the metadata, these are formatted into these different categories. Now if I click the top left here, oh, and then also one thing to point out is they're also sorted by eBooks, audiobooks, and videos, which we'll go into more detail in a little bit. If I click the top left here, it's going to take me back to the home screen. And another thing I wanted to point out, this is a customized area. Right here where it says student resources, this is an area that Tri-C has decided that when a student clicks on the website, they want, they want to show front and center um, student resources, things like study habits, paying for college. And since we're talking about a community college, there's a lot of uh, transfer type things, how to pick out a four-year university. So this is really helpful for their students, and it's, it's what they decide to promote. If next month the Tri-C says, we want to promote ethnic diversity, they could change this bookshelf and put those titles front and center so it's easy for the students. Now I'm going to scroll down a little bit, and I know there's a delay, so I'm trying to be a little bit slow with um, my navigation here. But they also promote popular titles on their front page just because they circulate very well. 
Um, their newest titles, they make sure that that's added on there. And then finally, uh, Tri-C or Cuyahoga Community College does have a pretty nice international population, so they have a whole ESL reader section at the bottom. So I am clicking up on the top. And by the way, if anyone can't hear me, um, let Mark know so he can let me know. Uh, so now I'm going on, or if you can't see my screen, let Mark know. Now I'm going to click on collections. This is something that was curated. So again, this is the part that's, that's customized when we have our uh, different institutions we work with. We don't want to just give them a bunch of books that aren't relevant. We want everything to be specific and this digital library to really represent you. So what Tri-C did with the help of our collections librarian is they made these different categories and these different bookshelves, if you will, that represent their programs. So if I were a student, it'd be real easy to find the content I need, whether it's in arts and education, business and tech, history and law, social sciences, and then even more advanced, they have a health and science library, which goes into some really specific nursing programs and uh, nursing fundamental type stuff. So what I'd like to do is just, because we want to look at the student experience, we want to see if this is actually going to help students and, and how they would use it. I'm going to click on that collections tab and for this role play, I'm just going to pretend I'm an education major that was assigned um, a research assignment. Uh, the professor told me that I can choose from these topics. I can look at special needs in education, uh, administration in schools, early childhood education, curriculum development. These are all in my paper uh, as for, for research topics. So I'm looking in here. I see that we have arts and education. I'm going to click right on education and teaching. And that's going to take me to this nicely curated section. And these are all books and titles that are related to education and, and teaching. These were titles that Tri-C specifically picked out and, and they knew that it would be useful for them. So I, I looked at these topics and I just went over them. And for me as a student, I, I like the idea of educational philosophies and theories. I think I can find content on there and I think it's a good uh, topic to, to look over. Now I'm scrolling through here. And again, I'm trying to go slow just so everyone can keep up. And I see this, this is sticking out to me. The challenges of mandating school uniforms in public schools. That lines up with philosophies and theories, so I think I might borrow that. And by the way, I've already been authenticated using my student ID, and Cuyahoga um, Community College uses an easy proxy. So I'm going to be able to check out any books from this point. Before I actually go ahead and click that borrow button, I'm going to click this button right here, where I can either read a sample, view details, just to make sure it's something that's going to help me with my schoolwork. So on that sample, I'm going to look at the chapters, and I'm looking this over, and this seems like it's going to be at least something to put on my bookshelf. So I'll go ahead and borrow that, and we're going to get a couple books here. Rethinking Common Core, that's another area where we're looking at educational philosophy. This is a research project, so we're going to look at the loans in just a moment here. And one more, this is for early, this might not be relevant, but let me click into it just to make sure. So the students can click into the book, read some more details, the description. If you're in a certain course, there's, there's dates where uh, your professor might not want you to use it. So you can check that it's within the last five, 10 years, depending on the particular subject and requirements. Cuyahoga Community College allows students to borrow books for seven, 14, and 21 days. They keep those options there. I'm gonna keep it on 14 days because I have about two weeks to complete this assignment. So we'll go ahead and borrow this book as well. You can see the title has been sent to my loans page and it can tell me how long I have it. Now, if I click this book button here, I want everyone to kind of think of this as a student when they go to a library and they want to check out, let's say four or five print books, they can carry, carry those around in their, their backpack if we're talking about physical books. But this is like your digital backpack. These are my assignments. I have research projects in these different categories and I click that button and now I have all this content with me wherever I go. So I'm gonna go ahead and open one up. I just want to show you, give you an idea of the, the reading experience within the actual book. Everyone can see that each of these books, it allows me to either uh, read in Kindle, which is a, a Kindle format that can be sent to these tablets or iPhones, iPad, Nook, any e-reader you have, it's gonna work on. Um, and then you would also download EPUB in most of these formats. For now, just because I have class in a little bit, I want to keep this as easy as possible. I'm going to click Read in Browser. So what you should see, let me go to the other screen here. 
what you should see is the full color covers come up. And just like you were reading a, a regular physical book, I click to the right and I'll be able to navigate. Okay, and I'll be able to go through the book here. And then if I click, if I click this button here, I'm gonna change, there's a couple features that I wanna show you. Um, one, right now we're in the publisher default. This is the default publisher setting. So if I were to get the print book, this is kind of what the font looks like. To make it easier on me, I wanna show you go to reading settings and we can click legible. So this makes it a little bit easier for me. And as you can see, there's no other distractions on the screen. It's just me and the book. And that's just to keep it very easy for the student to be focused on the work and, and not get distracted with uh, six or seven other things on the screen. So again, I'm navigating just by clicking to the right. Features of eBooks, such as holding the mouse button down, and I can highlight certain areas, define words, highlight and take notes. I'll show you how to get, go back to in just a second. But one more thing, I wanna go back to those reading settings. Um, of course, you could change legible and scholar and these different fonts, but there's also one font that we're, we're pretty proud of having. It's the open dyslexic font. And what this does, it makes the letters bottom heavy. So if you have students that have dyslexia, this actually makes it easier for them to read and, and to decipher those uh, specific letters. So again, these are just ways to kind of go about here. Now, as a student, I may need to find specific materials. Um, let's see, there's a, there's a case study, and I do need this for my research paper. So I'm able to jump to that specific area of the book. And these are all chapters. And another thing, since this is linked to our specific accounts and our authentication, if I'm dyslexic and I, I put the dyslexic font on there, that's gonna save across all my titles. I'm not gonna have to hit that every time I open a book. And, and likewise, if I'm ready to go to class now, let's say I'm done reading this book, I can simply X out of it and I'll be able to open it up exactly where I left off on. So that was just kind of a quick uh, student ebook experience to kind of give you an idea how a student would go through a book and, and read it from there. One more thing before we go on to the librarian experience, I'm gonna click the top left and get back to the, the front page navigation. This is a recommend to library feature. This is something for you to choose to add or not. It depends on, on how you wanna set up your digital collection. Again, we're trying to be very customizable and specific to what your institution needs and wants. I'm looking for a book called Crucial Conversations. And again, this is from the student perspective. And it doesn't look like this is currently available at my library. So if you wanna turn this on, you could allow these students to recommend this to the library. I'm gonna go ahead and recommend it. What I can do from the student's standpoint is put my email address in, and if, they're, uh, if the library decides to purchase it, I'll be notified on my email, and then I can go check out that book. Now, you from the librarian's perspective, there's a, a list of, of books that were recommended, so you can choose to purchase those depending on the content. You could also do things like set parameters, um, let's say nonfiction or within the last three years, to make that process a little more automated. And that was a, a quick overview of the student experience. Now what I'd like to do is kind of pull back the curtain a little bit and see where this content comes from. If we go over here, we should be seeing the marketplace screen. And this is where we house all of our books. You'll notice a, kind of a similar aesthetic where you have the, the, the uh, front page with these big covers, full color and everything like that. And you may not be seeing academic content, but I'll, what I'll tell you is what you see on the front page, we work with about 5,000 publishers and they constantly have different sales going on. So whenever there's a publisher sale, that's what you're gonna see front and center. Uh, last month when I was showing this platform off, we had a bunch of romance titles for February. So you can work with your account manager and your collections manager so they can notify you when certain publishers or certain types of titles become available so you can save the most when you're adding content. As far as the content available for academic libraries with Overdrive, there's over a million titles for you to choose from. That includes 80,000 audiobooks and 30,000 videos to, to select in an a la carte type format. Um, before we actually go into searching for a book, because a million titles sounds great, but if you can't find it, you know, what good is it? So we'll, we'll look at that in just a moment. 
But first, I want to go over some of this blue bar, some of these insights and, and features on the, the marketplace. Your insights tab, this is where you'll find reporting. I was talking with the librarian earlier, and they were telling me that they spend a lot of time on there looking at circulation statistics, which type of titles are circulating, you know, where their holds are, and all that information is sent to you monthly, but you can check it any time in that report section. The administration tab is where you can do the, like set um, the parameters for checkout times. How many books are you going to allow your students to, to check out? That's going to depend on the size of your collection, and over time you can grow that. You can add marketplace users, so more of your library liaisons, if you have liaisons and subject librarians, can get involved and build their own carts of materials that they would like to add to their digital library or your digital library. Things like mark records and, and local content in here as well. Uh, by the way, local content is a feature. If you have, if you own the copyrights to certain materials, you'll be able to upload those onto your digital library website so your students can check them out just like they would with any other uh, ebook or audio file. The curation tab, that's something we went over before. That was where the, those different bookshelves are and you can really customize it based on your programs. Uh, news is a great section for um, different publisher sales. If you have a new publisher sale coming up, this is where it's going to be featured. Support, you can easily reach out to your collection and account manager anytime. And when, once you get your website, they'll, that, they'll be really easily a way for you to find that contact information. But if I click on the support tab, you'll see some um, extra additional details of how you can easily um, fix something if you need to. Featured, we have a whole team of collection librarians here, and they're constantly coming up with new uh, list book list, so you can start that way if you want to add books like that. But again, it's up to you. So just like with the Cuyahoga Community College, the front-facing website, if you click the top left corner, you're back to the front page. Before I get into the actual uh, finding specific titles, let's point out the shop tab. Overdrive has a couple of uh, licensing or, or lending type models. Uh, the most popular one, one that we've been known for, is 90% of our, of our materials is one copy, one user. And what this means for you is that when you purchase one of these books, it becomes a permanent part of your collection. It's perpetual access. You don't have to buy this year after year. So you can build a strong collection over time. Now, some other ways that you can um, go ahead and look for titles. There's also simultaneous use. This is probably a smaller section of our collection. I'd say 5 to 10% of our publishers have simultaneous use packages. And these are uh, some you may be familiar with where you could license, that, license a certain number of titles per year. And those vary by publisher. There's simultaneous use audio, video, and ebook titles. So you can be very flexible with your collection. And we have a new model where we're adding publishers every day, uh, which is cost per click. So search, how do we find the titles that we're looking for with over a million to choose from? We want to extend the ease of use that, you're, that the students experience. We want to extend that to you, the librarians, on the back end. Of course, we can always search by an author, by title in this box right here. We can search by series. We can search by publisher. And then there's one more feature that we've added recently, um, and that's the ability to search by BISAC code. And that's going to be helpful to us, especially in the academic space. So I'm going to quickly click over to the BISEC website. You may have seen this before, but it's the official uh, BISEC code website. And I went into that education section. Um, let's say we wanted to build a philosophy, the education philosophy theory and social aspects. It's a very specific type niche type field in education. So if I go back to Marketplace and I paste that right in the search box, what this is going to do, it's going to use the, the metadata that we've uploaded and retrieve titles that are, are to that specific area of education. I pull that up and I'm pulling up 586 titles that are related to that field. And over to the left, there's some additional ways to, to filter, um, different layouts, or if we want to get some audiobooks in that field, we can do that. We can look at reviews, break it down by subjects, or if there's specific publishers that you're more fond of or you trust more in this type of field, you can bring up just those books, whether it's University of Toronto Press, Wiley, or Roman and Littlefield Publishers.
So I want to show you a couple more things here, and then we'll get back into the, the PowerPoint section. So what a lot of our, our library partners are, are do when they're adding to the collection is they can do things like sort by on sale or street date, so you're getting titles within the last couple of years, or popular by sales, just to see what is really selling well, what a lot of people have in, in their libraries. And now all the info that you need is right in front of you. We have the title of the book, we have where it's from, we have some more of these FISEC codes. So if you wanted to go into something more specific like education, uh, multicultural education, I can copy and paste that and then search a little bit further. We have our formats, the price. We'll be able to add this to a new cart or we can create carts, let's say uh, education cart, um, science cart, business cart, audiobook cart. And again, with the marketplace user access, you can have multiple logins that are able to, to build these different cards, and you can spend your budget however you'd like. So if we click in here, let's make sure this is going to be good for our library. It's something we want to bring in. I'm going to look at some of the info. I see the on sale and the street date. I see some uh, description here and formats with some permissions, so you'll know exactly what you're getting. And um, just like the student was, you can sample the book, but one really great feature of the, the actual marketplace is any of the users can preview the title in full. So just like we used with the OverDrive read before, you'll be able to click in here and make sure that this is going to be uh, appropriate for, for your users. So you can check through there and go through that. Okay, again, so I just wanted to give you a really good idea and, and real clarity on, on what the OverDrive system and the product is. You have the, the user experience, and we, we really want it to be easy to use for the students, and then you have the librarian experience. And if any of this seems like too much for you, keep in mind you have a, you have a team here when you become a partner. You have a collection librarian, and if you need specific content, they can go ahead and, and work with you to get those lists out, and they can do that curation but you have the flexibility and the freedom to do that along with uh, the additional features here. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, we'll get back into the PowerPoint, and what we'll do from here on out is break down some of the elements we saw in here, and then we'll uh, open it up for, for questions. I know we have a lot of people on, so. Okay, so we should be back to the PowerPoint. If you can't see that, you know, let me know, let us know in the chat. Just to, to give you an idea here, these are some of our academic partners. Um, these are our long-term partners. These aren't one-year type accounts. They've been with us for five, six years and have built substantial collections, and they've seen engagement grow. They've seen their checkouts grow, their holds grow. What this means is that their success is determined by how engaged their student population is. It's been a great resource for a lot of these libraries. Duke University has just recently added a great uh, business audio section. BYU has 800 religious titles. They, they have their own mixes based on, on the types of schools and organizations they are. And I also want to let you know that the, it's not just the big universities. These are just some of the ones we like to highlight because they're, they're somewhat well known. We work with um, seminaries such as New Orleans Theological Seminary. They have an FTE of about two to 300 students. So it really varies in size. And because you're able to buy content a la carte, you can really customize the collection and, and make it specific to your type of school, community colleges, transfer universities. Uh, you name it, I probably have an example. So I want to show two things that kind of um, give OverDrive a, a real nice uh, comfort in, in the marketplace. Uh, I, I know a lot of you may be familiar with OverDrive to the public space. Right now, we're in about 93 or 94% of, of public libraries where they're, they're e-book provider. They're we're who they've chosen. And there's a couple reasons for that. One is the flexibility. Let's say, um, like Paul, you can start with a classic lit section in, in uh, e-books, or you can start with educational titles, or maybe some popular reading. It's really up to you on how you want to start. But you can start with e-books, and then over time, start adding audiobooks, or maybe there's um, there's a need. Sorry about that. OK, 
Okay, sorry about that. So let's say over time there's a need to add audiobooks or streaming video titles. You'll you'll be able to do that, and and you'll be able to adjust as um, as that comes up. And again, kind of talking about why why we're chosen by so many partners. Another one of the reasons is is something called universal device compatibility. Any device that your students use, whether it's an iPhone, iPad, Android, Windows 10, when Windows 10.5 comes out, we adjust and we make sure that the books that you're purchasing are easily be able to, to be read by those devices. We're the only U.S. company that's partnered with Amazon that allows us to get books right onto that Kindle format. So there's no, you're not going to have to write a page or two of instructions on how to get these onto these different formats. We want to make it easy and seamless for a student to get a book onto their device, begin reading it, and then, then get on with it. Get the content they need and then move on. Again, this is another big reason why a lot of our, our academic and library partners have chosen us. Something I touched on before is um, being able to serve an international population. Not everyone has a huge international population, but if you do, we have our user interface available in 14 different languages. So you can, you can add these so those students can easily navigate the page, find the content they need. Above and beyond that, the actual content, you can add up to, there's 52 different languages. There's books and titles in 52 different languages. Not only is that for students that are trying to learn English from different areas of the world, but you may have some language learning programs. Like maybe there's some English students that want to learn Spanish, depending on what part of the country you're from. I'm just providing examples because, again, there's a lot of flexibility on what you can do. And we want you to be specific with, the, with this platform. So let's really do a, a kind of an overview of the catalog uh, in general. I mentioned it before, over a million titles are available to our academic partners. That includes 80,000 audiobooks. And the reason audiobooks are, are, are kind of on the rise, and, and something to think about if you haven't before, is not everyone is a, a visual learner. A lot of us are, but there's been a rise in, in podcasts, people learning on their way to work, people listening and absorbing information, uh, walking around at the gym. This is a great way. Think about business titles, history titles, certain literature titles. This is a, an additional way to help out uh, th those learners with those different types of learning needs or learning experiences. So again, 80,000 audiobooks. We've built collections audiobook-only collections and, and academic errors. So just ask about that, and we'll let you know what we can and, and can't do and be very upfront about the capabilities there. So we're going into the catalog. You know, what, what can we do? How can we build a, a collection? Well, if you want to support uh, reference titles, those titles are there. These are great when you have uh, an area that does a lot of research projects. These reference titles are a place for students to start. This is where they get that broadness of information, uh, again, a great place to start on specific research areas. And then when they narrow down that focus, we have plenty of scholarly monographs that get real pointed and narrow in some high level and, and deep subjects. Uh, depending on what you're offering at your school, this may be a section that you want to invest in and, and add some uh, titles in. Um, here's an example. Some of our libraries, you saw the bookshelf that Cuyahoga Community College have before with their, their student. Um, resources, you can have a whole section on your library website of ebooks that are career and test prep, uh, nursing tests, nursing study guides, accounting, the accounting test. And what this does is you can have these books, and when you see students checking it out, maybe over time the GPA goes up. That's something you can relate back. You know, we're always trying to bring more value to the academic library above and beyond and have these resources that, that really help the students. So this might be, be something you want to uh, talk about, see what kind of career and test prep there, there are. Engaging nonfiction. So, you know, Overdrive is, we do have a million titles. A lot of these are those uh, engaging these New York Times bestsellers. An example of where you might want to add one or, or think about it, you know, these may not all be tied direct to programs, but a book like the, uh, the Trump Fire and Fury book, if you were to, your students would be requesting that because it's something that's relevant over time, sure, they can go to the public library, but now they're competing with 100,000, whatever the size of the city, to try to get that same title. If you're buying that for your specific university or, or college, now you're giving your students, your population, some exclusivity 
behind the best books, and that's really providing a lot of value to, to the, the library and the institution itself. And then finally, if you want to promote um, literature or the most popular titles or even leisure reading, these are the, the titles that circulate well. We always have the newest titles and in every category, not just the, the popular fiction. We have add thousands of titles and new publishers every month. Um, that's one of the reasons why you might have heard of Overdrive before, just because of, of what we've done in this space. So I'm going to turn it back to Mark, who's going to um, send us some questions, and we'll get those answered for you and uh, get any feedback from here. So Mark, do you want to take it back? All right. That sounds great. Thanks, Rob. And I'll just grab the ball back there. Um, so we have plenty of questions coming through the, uh, the Q&A box, and I would just encourage folks, if you have additional questions for either Paul or for Rob, feel free to drop them in, and if we don't get to them today, um, we'll be sure to pass them along so that um, hopefully they can be taken care of as well. Um, so let me look back here for just a moment. Um, while you're looking, if you don't mind, I'd like to add something to Rob's comments. Sure, um, please. So, uh, Rob, I know you had mentioned starting off with an ebook collection, and then um, maybe as you grow a collection, uh, then uh, kind of go into audiobooks. But we actually kind of did uh, it a little bit different. We focused more on audiobooks at first, and that seemed to have worked out best for us. Um, Right now, uh, two thirds of our collection are ebooks, and one third is audiobooks. Uh, but um, so we have 8,700 titles uh, in our Mobius collection, and of that, so 30, 36% are audiobooks. But that 36% accounts for 63% of our checkouts. So it's it's kind of um, the numbers kind of flip there as far as usage. Right. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. Uh, it's very interesting to see what folks are actually using. Um, so I'm I'm just going to roll through the questions in the order in which uh, they came in. So Paul, um, I think we had a couple of early questions to which uh, you, you provided, uh, I believe, the respondent a, a written answer. But uh, it might be interesting to speak it out and let everybody um, hear your response to that. Uh, we have a question from Anthony, where Anthony is saying, did you have trouble finding subject matter titles in electronic format? And was OverDrive your only vendor for e-titles? No, actually our, our larger collection that we have um, is through EBSCO. But uh, with EBSCO, um, we personally focus more on academic titles and OverDrive more of the um, more current and popular titles. And no, we don't have a problem finding um, items to fill those subject areas. Okay, great. Um, and uh, also sticking with you for a moment there, Paul, um, we had a question about the circulation of eBooks and whether that increased when you created the consortium. What, what did happen to the circulation for, of eBooks when you did that? Um, so it, it increased exponentially. It had just um, through the week, uh, just as a solo library, just as uh, just having our own collection with Overdrive, we would maybe at best have um, 10 to 15 uh, checkouts uh, per day. Uh, now with the consortium, we're looking at uh, anywhere from 25 to 40 checkouts in a day. So it's increased dramatically. Wow. Great, great. Um, and this is, uh, I think, a question that either, that both of you perhaps may have uh, some ideas about. Um, but we have a, a question here that says simply, we use OverDrive in our library, and uh, this person is here to learn about ways that they can better market the platform to their students and the rest of the campus and community. Do you have any ideas about what you can do to market it. I know you talked about um, using bookmarks and things like that. Are there additional things that, that you'd like to add? Yeah, one of, 
One of the things that I failed to mention was, so every semester, you know, again, you know, you just have to stay on top of it because your uh, students are always circulating, or they graduate after four or six years, whatever, but uh, one of the things that we do is every semester we have a bring your own device um, uh, seminar type thing that we do at, at the library where uh, people that are interested in accessing uh, ebooks or audiobooks through their devices, they can bring their device in and we'll walk them through on setting up the app on their device and downloading the books, and that's proved pretty successful. Yeah, and thank you, Paul, um, for your perspective. I just want to add, add this uh, above and beyond the creativity that you can have. Overdrive offers free digital and printable customizable resources when you become a partner. And so you, you can put those right on your page. It does help when, you, when you're starting a new platform because not everyone's coming into the library, but if you can put the library in front of your students, it's really a great way to get started quickly and, and easily and early. Great, great. And uh, another question I think for you, Rob. Um, we have a question here that says, uh, um, aside from students recommending a specific title, is there a, a patron-driven acquisition model that's available through OverDrive? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's not something that I would say we have um, full scale yet, so I'm, I'm going to give it a no because I, I really want to play in reality in what's currently offered. Um, uh, down the road, there may be capabilities to do that in a much wider and, and better way, but right now, there's not that, that typical PDA um, expose the whole catalog that you may be used to. Okay. Um, interesting. And um, let me see. Quick question here from Beth. Um, how many patrons can use a book at the same time? Hi, Beth. Um, most of the, the content available through the OverDrive platform in the catalog about 90% is that is the one copy, one user. So if if John has the, the title, then Susie can't use it if you only have one title. Okay. Um, and a uh, question from Tricia here um, that I think Paul took a stab at, but that um, maybe you, Rob, can add some perspective on. Uh, can the um, reader or student download or keep their notes or highlights that they're making in the books there? Yeah, that's a good question. And it does depend on format, because I know in, in Kindle format, there's a way to um, export the notes, just because that's the nature of Kindle books. You're able to do that. Um, what I showed you was that OverDrive Read, and that's, that's our software where you can read on the browser very easily. And we're working on an API where, where the students can be able to keep that regardless if they have the book. Right now, they can't do that in that OverDrive read format, but there, there are some other formats that they are able to uh, do that in. Okay. Um, we've got a, a question here that may be too much to jump into, but I'll, I'll throw it out there and see um, whether this is doable or not. Um, we have uh, from Maria. Maria says, could you show how to set up the patron recommendation feature? Would that be possible? That's a, that's a good question. Thank you for the question. Um, I, it's not something I'll probably be able to kind of show. If we want to connect afterward, we, we, we can pr probably go into some more uh, detail on how that works. If you're talking about the recommend the library feature, yeah, we can definitely have a chat. And we'll provide our contact info in just a moment here. Um, if, if anyone wants to connect afterward and get, get into some specifics like that. Absolutely. Great, great. Great questions. Um, so we have uh, a question here from Stephanie uh, who says, our library has subscriptions via eBrary and EBSCO. Would OverDrive complement what we already have um, with audiobooks or streaming video? What, what are your thoughts on that? Hey, I'm, I'm going to just um, – Fair, Paul. If you, do you have any perspective on on the the complement with products like EBSCO? Just because you might have a little bit better perspective on that. Yeah. So um, EBSCO does offer popular titles and audiobooks like Overdrive, but we found that their selection is um, much smaller, not as, as much available. 
and uh, Overdrive's uh, prices per uh, title is cheaper than EBSCO's. So, um, uh, in, in that respect, Overdrive is much better than, than um, EBSCO's for um, title selection. Okay. Um, we have a question here from, let me see, from Neil. And Neil asks um, that he says, are, are music CDs part of the catalog for OverDrive? <laughs> Is there music available? No, that would be great. But right now um, in our audios, we offer 80,000 audiobooks. If you have copyrights to any kind of music type things, like maybe you have um, music programs there, if they're in MP3 files, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can upload those in, in local content. Uh, no music CDs right now. Okay. Um, we have a, a question here from Anne who says, can you speak more about simultaneous access? Uh, is, is that unlimited or capped um, at a certain number for the titles that are? Yeah, I can speak of that. So um, Maya could have went into it a little more, but the, like I said in the catalog, about 90% is that one copy, one user. You as a library buy that once and it's perpetual access. You don't have to buy that year two, year three. There is a section of simultaneous uh, use titles, and those go by different publishers. For example, Britannica, they have a whole section of um, simultaneous use, and those come in different packages, whether it's one title, and that could be unlimited for your whole uh, student population. And you could buy one title, simultaneous access, and it's usually what it is, it's a, a uh, year of access, so you have to buy that or pay for that license year two or year three. Um, just keep renewing it. And, and there's, there's a lot of variation in, in what you can do with the, um, those different publisher and those different simultaneous use packages. But to, to answer your question very clearly, uh, yes, unlimited, it would be un, unlimited use on those. Okay. Um, let me see here. We've got, um, Uh, a question here from Beth who says, are there printing options available for the books? Yeah, Beth, thank you for the question. Uh, one of the things that we we looked at very briefly in the marketplace is under the formats, it shows you different formats that are, that are available in, you know, such as EPUB and Overdrive Read. Within those, we work with so many different publishers and they all have their own kind of uh, permissions they set. Some of them uh, allow unlimited copying and and printing uh, some of them are, are very well, a lot more restricted on that that does vary by publisher so i can't give a an exact answer but i, I will say it varies and it depends on, on which title uh, that you're talking about okay that makes sense um looking through the questions here um we have a question here from stephanie and stephanie asks uh, is Biblio Commons available to patrons for social media sharing or something like Goodreads? Is that something um, that uh, would be reasonably easy to integrate or, or is that a totally separate thing? If, uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't quite, I didn't quite catch it. I'm sorry. Sure, sure. No problem. Um, we have a question about, um, using Biblio Commons uh, and Goodreads? Um, do you have widgets for, for sh social media sharing and those sorts of things? Okay, um, okay. I, um, I don't, no, I don't think so. I, I don't okay. think we do. I, that hasn't come up before, but uh, you no, know. You I don't think there is that capability with, with those titles, no. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> We had um, so we have a, a question from Beth uh, for audiobooks. Can you have more than one user? Is that the same as with uh, the print books? Uh, audiobooks, same thing. Mostly uh, one copy, one user on those. Um, there's a nice selection of simultaneous access titles too, so you can be flexible. Um, Blackstone Audio is one that I could think of that has those simulate simultaneous use packages. Uh, keep in mind, though, when you purchase those, they, they, it, it's one year, and then you have to you're buying that package again. So that might be uh, suitable for your needs. 
It really depends on um, what you're trying to do. And, and Mark, I saw a question from Floyd Thomas. Um, do students have the ability to use ebooks for free through the li school library access code? Uh, yeah, this would be uh, free for the students if you were an, an overdrive partner. They could use their student ID. There's a number of authentication methods for them to go through. And if you want to talk specific about the specific authentication methods to make sure it works with yours, we can absolutely, uh, you know, send some more details in the sheet on that. Okay, great, great. And um, we have a uh, question here about um, maps and artwork. Is, are, is there artwork or maps that are available um, specifically? Um, I can sort of answer part of that. Is, uh, we do have multiple art books in our, uh, in our collection. Uh, but just it's basically ebook format where you can look through the images of a particular artist. But um, beyond that, Rob will have to answer. Yeah, as, as far as maps, I, I'd have to look because again, there's a million titles, and, and depending on what comes up in kind of these uh, early conversations, is is what I know what's in there. You know, I know we have a great art uh, collection, art history, um, photography books, real full color type details. I haven't looked into to, um, maps, but artwork, absolutely. There's there's plenty of titles that you can build a collection around. Great, great. Um, we've got a question. Okay. Um, let me look. Sorry, there are just a lot of questions to scroll through. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking here. Then we've already hit on. Um, um, as yeah, far as to add to that, um, if you uh, you know somebody else had asked about atlases, so I just did a, a search in Overdrive's uh, catalog to their marketplace, and there are uh, many atlases available. So yeah, there are maps and atlases. Great, great. Um, as far as any, if anyone wants uh, pricing questions, um, we can we can answer those individually. Um, you know, based on a couple things, collection size, uh, FT, and, and things like that. So that's going to really vary for everyone. But um, happy to to kind of provide some some more info in that. Um, you know, in, in private or or by contact. All right, that that makes sense. And I think that uh, this may be a, a good place to. To wrap up here, as we've just got a few minutes left, um, if there are any last-minute quick questions that um, folks have, you might be able to sneak them in here um, under the wire. Otherwise, um, we will start to wrap up. All right. So I would just like to take a moment here to thank you, Paul, and thank you, Rob, for uh, your time today and for presenting all this information. Um, it's been really fascinating and, and interesting to see what, what is available out there and how it works. Um, I would also remind our viewers that we did record today's program, so please be on the lookout for a follow-up email from ACRL and Choice with a link to the recording. You should get that probably sometime tomorrow morning or shortly thereafter. Um, and you should right now see a link to our quick five question survey in the chat box. If you have a minute to fill that out, please do let us know how we did. We appreciate your feedback very much. Um, and I would say thank you to everyone out there for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the session and I hope the rest of your, your afternoon is excellent. Thanks so very much, everybody.